Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and IDI Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast isn't legal advice. The Florida Bar Association says that I've got to tell you that, but now that I've said it, nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Vestibular disorders are disorders that impact the vestibular system that controls balance. These disorders can be highly disabling, but they can be difficult to objectively prove and convince the disability carrier that you're entitled to the disability benefits you deserve. Now, I will tell you that disability carriers hate these claims and you need to be educated before you stop work and apply for benefits because of vestibular disorders. I'm going to take a deep dive into three vestibular conditions, dizziness, Meniere's disease, and BPPV. Specifically, I'm going to talk about four things today. First, what you need to know about how disability carriers view vestibular disorder disability claims. Secondly, the 21 things that your doctor should address in your medical records in your ERISA disability claim for dizziness. Thirdly, what medical testing a disability carrier will expect to see in your Meniere's disease long-term disability claim. And lastly, BPPV and your ERISA disability insurance claim. Let's take a break before we get started. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. What you need to know about how disability carriers view vestibular disorder disability claims. The vestibular system is your gyroscope. It works with your eyes, the visual system, and your bones and joints, your skeletal system, to maintain the position of your body at rest or in motion. It does this by detecting mechanical forces, including gravity, that act on your vestibular organs when you move. Now, vestibular disorders can cause problems with loss of balance, dizziness, vertigo, fainting, problems with vision, hearing, and can even impair your cognitive abilities. Most vestibular disorder cases are denied simply because disability carriers hate these cases because in part they are based on your subjective complaints. After all, anybody can say that they have a poor memory, they have difficulty concentrating, they can't hear, and of course they can't work. Now, let's talk more specifically because disability carriers have position papers on vestibular disorder claims. They will have internal policy statements that guide the claims adjuster, their peer review physicians, and the vocational evaluator on how to evaluate a vestibular disorder claim. I think there are three disturbing patterns in these policy statements. Number one, vestibular disorder cases without objective evidence should be denied. Two, don't give a lot of weight to subjective complaints if there's no objective basis for the diagnosis or causation. And number three, anybody who's got a vestibular, vestibular disorder, regardless of the severity, can work. Remember, these are three principles that are going to guide disability carriers or plans in evaluating your claim. Once you've filed your initial claim for disability benefits, the disability carrier is going to get a copy of your medical records. They're going to have those records and your physician's attending physician statement form reviewed by its medical team. Many vestibular disorders can initially be accepted by the disability care, but then denied once there has been a plateau or once there are no complications. In other words, once they think you're quote unquote stable, they'll see that as a reason to potentially deny the claim if they haven't denied the claim sooner. So let's talk more about the denial of benefits after your vestibular disorder has stabilized. The carriers will wrongly assume that once your vestibular system disorder uh, uh, is become stable with medication, that you can immediately return to work or they can refuse to acknowledge the progression of your vestibular disorder and its complications on the other side of this. Unfortunately, not all disability claims adjusters are familiar with the stages and progressions of vestibular disorder, the symptoms, the treatment, the side effects from the medication that in and of themselves can result in disability. That's why it's so important that I think in your medical records that you are documenting your symptoms, document the objective medical testing that supports your claim, 
and that your physician properly completes an APS form. Now, I also do social security disability work, and I often will supplement the uh, disability insurance carrier plans APS form with a residual functional capacity form for vestibular disorders that we use in our social security cases. I think that's important because those APS forms purposely don't ask the right questions. And we want to provide the disability carrier with all the necessary information they need to understand the extent of your disability and why you qualify for your benefits. So let's talk about an analysis of those medical records by the disability carrier or plan. What's going to happen is that the disability carrier or the plan is going to ask that a staff nurse or a physician evaluate your records to determine first if there are any objective basis for the diagnosis. Next, they're going to ask, is there an objective basis for the restrictions and limitations assigned? Now, it's not uncommon for disability carriers to hire what I call liar for hire peer review medical companies, who in turn will hire a liar for hire medical gun to review your file and create reasons to deny your claim. By the way, these liar for hire physicians are not always experts in vestibular disorders. But what they're going to be looking for and what things you should be, make sure are in your medical records are the following. How long have you had the vestibular disorder symptoms? What are the nature of those symptoms? Have you undergone a tilt table test and what's the result of that? Have your symptoms progressed or changed over time? And if so, how? What have you reported to your physicians about how your vestibular disorder symptoms impact your ability to do activities of daily living and compare that to what you reported on your activity of daily living forms. So they're looking for inconsistency. They, of course, want to know the nature of the treatment and your response to that treatment. They do want to know the side effects of medication. They also want to understand what other physicians have diagnosed a vestibular disorder and what other complications you might have. They always want to know what your physicians have to say about your physical exam, the diagnostic studies, and laboratory findings. And they expect that you will be seen by a specialist for the treatment of your symptoms, such as a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, an ENT, a balance specialist, a psychiatrist, and maybe even a psychologist. So what else is the claims examiner going to review? They're going to have a review of the attending physician statement form that your physician completed and any objective testing. Of course, they're going to pick it apart and they may even have their physicians contact your physicians and in order to persuade your physician that you can work in at least a sedentary capacity doing routine repetitive tasks. You should be asking your physician uh, to do the following. If they have any contact from the carrier, particularly if it's in, in phone, by phone, you want to ask that your physician suggest that the carrier put all of those questions in writing so that there's no chance that that liar for hire peer review or will misrepresent what your physician might have said during the call. Don't be surprised if disability carrier physicians or plan physicians lie about those conversations. You do want to have your physician send me a copy of their response and the letter that the carrier sent before it's submitted to the disability carrier so I can review it and make sure that it is correct. Guess what? Your policy may have given the disability carrier the right to have you examined by a physician of their choice. This is called an independent medical examination, and I will tell you, it is anything but independent. These liar for hires are paid to give the disability carriers a reason or reasons to deny your claim. If the disability carrier's physician or claims adjuster questions your restrictions and limitations, you most likely are going to be scheduled for that IME. That IME is going to take from his, a history from you about the severity and duration of your symptoms, your responses to treatment, and side effects of medication. And guess what? They are going to compare that to what you put on your activity of daily living forms and what you told your physician. Why? Because they're going to ultimately suggest that you might be exaggerating the extent and nature of your symptoms and the impact those symptoms have on your ability to function. Now, I will generally prepare my clients for that examination. And if possible, I want to try to videotape that examination. If it's not possible, we want to have a third party witness to audio tape the examination uh, and take notes. So if the carrier contacts you directly and wants to set up an IME, it's time for you to hire an experienced ERISA disability attorney. I also want you to understand that claims are won and lost 
with attending physician or residual functional capacity forms and neuropsychological testing. The vestibular disorder claim and any complications are won and lost, I think, based on the history that you give to your uh, physician, the exam findings, and these APS or RFC forms. They're also going to be making a decision in part based on your credibility. So I want you to understand that all of this comes into play. That may even result in them doing a review of your social media to look for you doing things that seem to be inconsistent with a vestibular disorder. I once represented a physician's assistant who had Meniere's disease and they had film of him golfing on a boat and attending his son's football games. They argued all of those activities were inconsistent with his complaints of vestibular disorder. Ultimately, we were able to overcome that, but I want you to understand that social media is postings are also a weapon that disability carriers will use in Meniere disease cases and other vestibular uh, disorder claims. Got it? Let's take a break. Robbed of your peace of mind by your disability insurance carrier? You owe it to yourself to get a copy of Robbed of Your Peace of Mind, which provides you with everything you need to know about the long-term disability claims process. Request your free copy of the book at kvlaw.com today.